Good morning everyone. It is Thursday morning. It is 7, 6.30 and we're getting ready for the gym. Um, I put my outfit on as you can see but whenever I wake up in the morning I cannot stand bright lights. Like I need a second, okay? So I didn't, I didn't turn on the lights until now but tonight y'all can see the full this is a full fit. You know, I had to go with Warner. It's the only shorts and bra that I own from Warner, but girl, <laughs> I wear it all the time. So today I'm gonna do legs, and I'm gonna take you guys through a full quad day and what that looks for me. Um, I know I post a lot of I post a lot of workouts on my Instagram, but. Um, this will be very detailed, very much in-depth, and step-by-step, step, <laughs> my formula, my secrets and tricks. I'm kidding. There's no secrets in here. There's just a bunch of advice, a bunch of cues to use while you work out. Um, what else? Um, I don't know. Just details. The deets. This is the best deodorant in the freaking world. Anyway, the way that my gym is made or built or whatever, um, it, when it's cold outside, it's cold inside. When it's cold outside, it's cold inside. Yeah. And when it's hot, it's hot. So right now, since it's freaking freezing, the weight area, I guess, doesn't have like good insulation or something because it is so cold in there. So I'm probably going to have to wear a jacket. Which is fine, but it's just frio. I say, mucho frio. So, here we go. I have class at 9.30. <laughs> I'm always cutting it close. That's why I wanted to wake up earlier to not be in a rush. But, you know. <laughs> Sleep is important anyway, so I'm not mad, but... Favorite energy drinks are the woman's best ones, but I don't have them right now. I'm waiting for my package, so I'm gonna use Rain. They're pretty good too, but woman's best is just top tier. My belt from Upper. Well, I can't drive like drive like this, so we have to wait for her to warm up a little bit. You. There we go. <laughs> okay, time for the voiceover part of the video. So the most important part, I think, of starting your workout is the warm-up and the mobility. Here I'm doing these squat motions. So I go down all the way as deep as I can. And as I go up, I'm having a good stretch in my hamstrings. And when I go down, if you can see my elbows, I am pushing out my knees. So it opens up my hips more. And this is just an overall great mobility for your ankles, your knees, and your hips. Um, this next one is also amazing for your ankles. So you're just putting most of your weight on that front leg and letting your ankle just kind of get stronger for your lifts. Also, I go down that way to stretch out my hamstrings and twist this way. Wait, hold on. Let it come. Okay. So that way I get some back mobility as well. I stretch and twist my back. Again, it is 6.30 in the morning, so everything is stiff. So you want to do these a couple of times until you get pretty warmed up. So by focusing on ankle mobility, you are able to go deeper into your squat. So the deeper and the, mo the more weight you put on that front leg, the more um, flexible, I guess, your ankle gets. And that way you can get a deeper squat, which means more gains, etc. 
So this next one is a side lunge. I love doing these. It also hits your side, um, not your side, your inner thighs. So also ankle mobility, hip mobility, everything. You want to stay as low as you can when you're transitioning from left and right. So here I am sitting all the way down and then coming right back up. This way it also kind of strengthen, strengthens your hip. So going down slowly, touch the floor, and the same position, come back up. Okay, time for some leg swings. Classic mobility, warm-up movement, really get your joints going. Um, I could do these front to back, side to side, and then hip circles. Um, I normally do more mobility work than this before my workout, but since I was in a time crunch, this I opt for this quick five-minute warm-up. I also, sometimes if I feel extra stiff, I'll go on the treadmill, walk for about five, ten minutes on the incline, and that usually gets me pretty warmed up, but today, Again, did not have much time, so we're just doing these hip circles, leg swings, just for five minutes before we get into squats. So here I'm doing side to side, really open up your hips. Um, this also, guys, warming up prevents injury, and the more mobility and the more deeper you're able to go in your squat, the better, I think. And then here I am stretching out my quads. This little bend back, I'm rounding my back and tucking my chin in because my spine felt a little stiff so doing these really loosened up my spine and my back ready for some squats okay so time for some squats this will be the first lift of the workout again compound movements are important and you want to do them at the beginning of your workout because they will take the most energy out of you and are the most important so we are starting off with squats today any major lift you do, make sure you do it just uh, with no weight or body weight. So here I am just doing like 10 to 12 reps of just the bar. Again, going as deep as I can. Not too fast, not too slow. So another thing that I've been loving to do is putting on a plate on each side and squatting as deep as I can, holding that for around 10 seconds and then coming back up and doing some reps. I will do this at the beginning and at the end of my squat um, routine and it has helped me go deeper so much. So here I'm preparing myself, I always do this, walk myself out, get my feet lined up, look up, breathe in, brace and go all the way down and I'm pausing for like 10 seconds. I'm counting in my head, I don't know how fast I was counting or how slow, but this yeah, and then coming back up and then squatting normally. This has really improved my hip mobility and my strength in my hips. Just for holding that bottom position in itself is difficult, especially with 135. If you can't do this with 135, obviously do it with like 10s or maybe just the bar. Just holding it at the bottom as well is really beneficial. So I was actually kind of tired today. The weight just was moving really slow than usual but we're gonna keep going so after that we're putting on some weight okay now we can start to peck on the weight so here I have 175 and I'm gonna rep it out um, one thing that's important is when you go under the bar like I am right now you want to make sure your feet are shoulder width apart so don't start in a staggered stance with one foot in front of the other make sure they're aligned shoulder width apart then come up and then walk yourself out um, again prevents injury especially when you're lifting heavy so here breathe in brace and go down and come up yay <laughs> again doing that hold at the bottom really helps me another cue for squats is instead of thinking to lift the weight up think of pushing your feet into the ground so as I'm doing these I think push 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 as in push your feet down like dig your feet into the ground that way your lifts will be easier and also look up do not look down at your feet because most likely you're gonna start rounding your back and you're gonna go forward so keep your eye level forward I think this is my top set I'm doing 185 Again, the weight was just feeling way too heavy today, so I brought out the belt. This is, again, from upper. A lifting belt like this one is there to help you brace your stomach. 
to put your back and your stomach against a hard object like a belt it's not a replacement for bracing you still have to brace it would just help you with more heavier weights so um, you will see me still bracing um, again only use the belt when you're going heavy just because you can also work your core really really well with your main lifts like squat or deadlift by bracing bracing is an incredible core exercise that should be done often and every time you do a big lift like this so I think I only did like three of these today again the weight just felt too heavy <laughs> but the belt did help a little bit with my bracing and control and feeling more supported. Okay, here is a different angle. So see how my shoulder, my feet are shoulder width apart. And I'm bracing and going all the way down and coming back up. See how my knees aren't caving in together? They're staying aligned with my toes. So if that happens where your knees just go in together and together, you have to work on your side glutes. So doing like abductor movements in the abductor seated machine will be great. Um, so remember the bottom position that I hold for 10 seconds. We are doing that again. So I'm taking all the weight off and just going all the way down as low as I can and holding it for 10 seconds. This by this time I am tired okay I probably held it for like eight seconds and then kind of came back up and I think I did reps yeah and I just repped as much as I could after those 10 seconds it's pretty hard pretty brutal but it gets my legs juiced up like I could be good and go home after this but we're gonna keep going okay we're gonna keep going to the hack squat machine If you have this machine at your gym, use it and use it now. It is so amazing for so many different things. One of my favorites is step ups. It is so good for step ups. It allows you to add more weight than you're used to. So here the main thing is that back leg, don't let it bounce off the floor too much when you come up. So let your foot slowly come off the ground when you're up and just let that front leg do all the work. Again, the back leg will do a little bit but the front is your main focus. So here I'm switching legs. And again, don't let your knee cave in. Um, I'll show you in the next clip. But let your feet be aligned with your toes. I know this machine is intimidating just because it's big. Probably in the middle of the gym. Your butt is going to be out. But don't let that fool you. This is so good for your gains. Um, and then I superseted this with squats. So I did step ups with each leg immediately followed by squats. This had me going crazy. It is so good. Gave me such a good burn, especially if you're in a time crunch. If you can just do supersets, gold. You're golden. You'll have the juiciest pump ever, especially with this machine. <laughs> I swear by this machine. I love this machine. Um, again, it is intimidating, but just try it. You will never know once you try. Again, people at the gym are also there to help you. And this video, I hope, helps you um, know how to set it up and use it because it's such a blessing, to be honest. <laughs> so here is a different angle of my legs. So see how I'm putting my, my foot in the middle of the platform and then going down. So again, this just creates a better angle. See how my knee is aligned with my toes. It doesn't cave in. And if, again, you have that problem, use the abductor machine. Again, with the next leg, my knee is aligned with my toes. I am barely tapping. Well, I'm putting my full foot on the floor just because I'm doing heavy weight, but I'm not letting it bounce off the floor. Immediately followed by some squats. Adjusting my foot a little bit, not letting my knees cave in. Super important key. Again, same cue with this one is think, press your feet into the ground. That way you don't lift with your back so much. I was absolutely tired at this point, but we're gonna go to the next one, which is leg extensions. These are a classic for the quads. They isolate them so good. Would you believe me when I tell you I actually didn't start doing these until like a couple months ago? I I don't know, I had this like weird knee pain when I first started doing these, so I would never do them. But then it just kind of went away. It was weird. So now I love these for quads. One thing that I 
have learned with these is don't flex your feet up. Let them relaxed and let the weight be on your ankles. And yeah, just kick up. Um, again, don't flex your feet. You want to keep them relaxed the whole time. That way you let your quad do the most work. This is an example of an accessory exercise that you want to do after your lifts. So you wouldn't want to start with these. Uh, at the start of your workout, you want to kind of have this in the middle or maybe at the end as a burner. But here's another angle of my feet and this machine. I'm going pretty fast here, but promise you it's controlled, as you can see in my face. <laughs> the next one is another accessory exercise. This is the leg press. I'm doing these pretty heavy. I have three plates on each side. Shoulder feet apart slightly down on the platform so it will create more knee flexion aka more knee bend more ankle bending and we will hit the quads more so if you put your feet lower on the platform it'll hit your quads more and if you put your feet higher up on the platform it will be more hamstring because you won't bend your knee as much so yeah I think I did like eight reps of this don't lock your knees. This is really important. Don't lock your knees. So don't let the weight kind of put your legs completely straight. Keep them bent at an angle. That way you're protecting your knees. Also, when you are pressing up, don't let your butt come off the chair of the leg press. So keep your butt down. Don't let it rise up. If it does rise up, you are doing it way too heavy and you need to lower the weight. We're doing this a superset. These are heel elevated goblet squats. When you elevate your heel, you are able to go deeper into your squat. That way you are focusing more on your quads. Last tip is hold the weight in front of you by your chest. That way, again, when the weight is in front of you, you are doing quads. Um, I did these as many reps as I could until failure and that was the last workout. I'm tired and I am running late.